Hey everyone, yesterday we looked at position-wise feed-forward networks. Now we actually have enough knowledge to code up one arbitrary encoder layer. Not the whole encoder stack, we still need to look at positional encoding before we can do that. But positional encoding plus, uh, but we're about 70% done up to, up to the current point with the new concepts in the transformer. So if we go back to our diagram, um, we can see that what we're now going to do is just code up one of these layers. So we're just gonna have a class which does this. And after we're finished with positional encoding, we will create a, like an encoder class, which will contain all of our encoder layers and, and the positional encoding as well. So right now we're just going to code up one encoder layer class. Okay, so let's jump to it. Okay, so here we're in um, layers, encoder layers, okay? So I just want to make you aware that I have a MHA, so multi-head attention class inside of, uh, inside of this. Let me just uh, try and open that. Okay, um, so this is what we're using. It's very, very slightly different to, um, to what we looked at in the multi-head attention video previously. And um, I'll run through that in a second here, but let me just run through the conceptual um, or, or through this code first. Okay, so if we go back to our uh, our diagram, just so we can refer to, to this. So um, we have some inputs coming in, and in our case, these inputs are going to be called X. We're also taking something in called a mask. Now, I'm going to cover this when we actually get to training the transformers. Uh, right now, just ignore it. Uh, it's not particularly important in the encoder, um, but just to be aware in case you guys are wondering what this is, um, we will cover this in more detail later on. Anyway, so what this layer consists of is um, two residual layer normalizations. So we have one here and one here. You also have a multi-head attention module and a position-wise feed-forward module. All we're going to do is now just chain all these operations together and together that will be our encoder layer class. So um, we'll initialize them obviously, first of all. So we'll have uh, norm one is a residual layer norm. Norm two is another residual layer norm. So these two will learn different lambdas and betas for each of the layer norm weights within them. Um, then we'll have our multi-head attention class, which I'll dive into more in a second. And we'll have our position-wise feed-forward network, which we looked at yesterday. Okay, so now one of the differences between the multi-head attention class that we used um, a couple of days ago and what we're using here is the fact that we're now going to, instead of just feeding in one X, we're going to feed in um, something to be made Q, something to be made K, and something to be made V. And the reason why we're doing this will become more clear in uh, when, we, when we look at the decoder. Uh, let me just open up what we, what we had the other day. So this is this what we what we looked at in the other day is an examples MHA. What we're using is in layers MHA. Um, but if we notice, like, uh, let me just bring this over to uh, to to this side. I'll collapse this, and we can just kind of really quickly gloss over the differences. So here we received an X and we sent X to linear Q, linear K and linear Vs. Uh, here we're receiving, basically we're going to be sending in, in the encoder, the same input. So pre Q, pre K and pre V are all the same thing. So you could just think of this as X and then we'll, you know, we could put X, X, X here. As I said, the reason why we uh, have this distinction between uh, why we have this explicit distinction is more for the decoder. So when we get to the decoder, we'll look at why we um, why we have this there. And we also have this mask argument. Again, uh, this is this is more for the decoder than it is for the encoder. Um, so when we get to the relevant part, we can we can talk about it. Uh, apart from that, the code is basically the same. Uh, in scale dot product attention, we do do something with the masks. Um, but as I said, again, this is more for the decoder, not for the encoder. Right now, the, the mask for the encoder, we can just get away with pretending for it to be uh, none. So when that's the case, and when pre-Q, pre-K, and pre-V are all the same thing, then basically we've, um, we're, uh, everything is the same as what the MHA that we looked at yesterday, or the day before, rather. Okay, so let me get back to the encoder layer. Okay, so now that we've run through uh, all of these layers, let's actually run through the forward method. So our X is going to be some encoding, so the output of the previous encoder layer. 
And this is going to be something which is batch times sequence length times uh, D. So hopefully by now you guys have noticed that in basically all places, um, whenever we're feeding things to different sublayers, everything is going to be d-dimensional. We're not really toying around with uh, having to deal with different dimensions. The exceptions to this are in the multi-head attention, where we have a lower d for or a lower dimension for each of the heads, but then we concatenate everything back to d-dimensions. And in the position-wise feed-forward network, where we start with d-dimensions, we project it to something that's bigger, and then we project it back down to d-dimensions as well. Anyway, so we'll take our x and notice that pre-q, pre-k, and pre-v are all x here. So we're just, uh, instead of feeding in one x and performing that, the calling the transformation over each of the x's, we're feeding each of the x's in, in manually. Um, again, that and the mask uh, will, will be made clear why we're doing that when we move over to the decoder. But the, the MHA, uh, the multi-head attention, runs the same way that we looked at a couple of days ago. And here we get the, the, the outputs plus the encoder attention weights. Then we run our residual and layer normalization layer. So if we go back to um, this, this diagram, we see that to the, to the uh, residual layer norm, what we're going to be sending in is the multi-head attention and also the output of the encoder as the previous, um, as, as the residual that we actually want to have. So uh, we feed both of those in and inside the, the norm class, we're going to add the two together. Then with the output of this, we're going to run our position-wise feed forward network and this will return something which is uh, batch times sequence length times D. And then we're going to um, do a, another um, residual layer norm. And here, let me just uh, draw this out for you guys. So here we're going to have the position wise going into this residual norm and the previous residual norm being the residual connection into uh, into the second residual norm layer okay so we feed in the output of our position wise feed forward network here which is ff and norm one as our residual connection this gives us norm two which is what's going to be sent forward from uh from so the output of, of this residual norm is sent as this output here into the next layer. Okay, so let's take a look at actually using that. So, I don't actually have this coded up. Let's, let's code it up real quickly. From Layers dot encoder layer equals encoder layer, and then we are going to have an X and a mask. So we'll just use this. Um, we we'll use this toy encodings that we worked with earlier on, right here. So we'll just say uh, toy. Encoder layer equals encoder layer, and what arguments we take? We take D model num heads in DFF. So let's have D model as four um, num heads as two, and DFF as sixteen, and then we will feed in toy encoder layer outputs equals toy encoder layer and feed that in with toy encodings and we don't have a mask so this is this is this here and then we will just um, print the output and print the shape Sorry, so this returns a tuple, so this is also toy encoder layer, uh, and this is going to be attention outputs. Okay, so we fed in, so so what we're seeing up here is, um, let me, let me, 
print this out as well so we uh, so I don't confuse you guys. Toy layer attention output. So our encoder layer is returning uh, the outputs and also the attention weights as well. Um, and here I will just let me just move that to a, a new line for you guys. Okay, so uh, our inputs were one by three by four. So the, we, we fed these in as inputs. So batch size of one, sequence length of three, and model dimensionality of four. And we get something which is one by three by four as an output. And we can see that here. And then um, from our multi-head attention class that we, that we looked at the other day, um, our attention weights will be returned to us in something which is batch size by num heads by sequence length by sequence length. Okay, so we know our sequence length is three, so one, two, three, uh, and we know that we we fed in number of heads as two. So what we get is uh, something which is one, so our batch size by the number of heads. So we have two heads by three by three. Okay, so this is how much uh, for each one of our heads. So we have one the output of one head here and the output of the other head here. Uh, for each word inside of this, inside of the uh, inside of this three by three tensor, uh, this is how much word one should pay attention to word one. This is how much word one should pay attention to word two. How much word one should pay attention to word three, and so forth. So this is for the first head, and then this is for the second head. Okay, cool. So that summarizes our encoder layer. Tomorrow we'll be looking at uh, positional encodings, and then after that we can actually build our whole encoder, uh, our encoder and our encoder stack um, for for use in in the actual transformer. We'll look at the decoder after that. Followed by that, we'll be looking at transformers in their entirety and piecing one together to train it. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this lesson, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.